If you're watching this movie right now, congratulations. You survived the apocalypse, but that's not saying much. You're living in a pretty dark, cold world. A world where ice covers every single square inch of Earth. But this ice isn't the ice you put in your drink or the ice children skate on. This ice is deadly. If one atom of this ice comes into contact with the moisture in your mouth, you'll instantaneously end up just like the rest of the Earth, frozen solid forever. Nice, isn't it? I'm Jonah, by the way. I'm one of the few who knows exactly how we got, well, here. I know how the world came to the end, how the world was ruined by that evil substance in a matter of moments. Actually, I suppose the world was doomed years ago the day that Marine General approached Felix Honecker. Felix Honecker, creator of the atomic bomb. It's quite a feat people ending the Second World War. It seems the United States government needs your help again. I need you to create a substance that can freeze the mud for my Marines. I don't care what it is or how you do it. I just need you to get it done. Will you do it? He didn't need to ask. When Felix Honecker was given a problem, he would solve it. He never once thought about what he was doing or why he was doing it. He only worked for science. As it turns out, he discovered how to freeze mud in a matter of months. Of course, he wasn't eager to share his findings. He simply went on with his next project. Apparently, while attending the first testing of his own atomic bomb years before in New Mexico, he seemed to have a very tame reaction to the explosion. Science is now known sin. What is... Anyways, Honecker called his solution to freezing mud Ice-9, a crystallized isotope of water, which combines with and freezes any moisture it touches. Only a mind such as Honecker's could begin to understand such a substance, so I'll spare the science of Ice-9. But this time, he did not tell the government of his discovery. He would only tease his children with stories of his new creation, and on one fateful Christmas Eve, the fate of the very world was sealed. Children, isn't it marvelous? Tell me, Angela, what is the melting point of ice nine? I don't know, Dad. It's 114 degrees Fahrenheit. Me and you are going for a walk. Would you like to come handle it? Isn't it marvelous, dear? Needless to say, Honecker's children did not take much interest in their father's obsession with science. But as the three children were returning from their walk, Angela Honecker noticed something very strange. She walked up the stairs, only to find her father no longer rocking in his normal rocking chair. Felix Honecker was dead. The children, fully aware of Ice Nine's incredible power, divided the substance equally amongst each other in small containers. At that moment, I had no idea what Ice Nine was. It was not until many years later, when the three were young adults, that the Honecker family came into my life. I began writing a book about the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, specifically what people important to the bomb were doing that day. I began contacting everyone who knew Felix Honecker, and that is how I met his three children. I wrote a letter to New Honecker first, telling him I was focusing more on the human side of the bomb than the scientific side. In that time, Ice-9 had somehow become known to various governments, the Soviets, the Americans, and the people of the small island of San Lorenzo all wanted their hands on the substance. They all obtained it from one of the children, in one way or another. But it was Frank whose Ice-9 was the first to be used by the president of San Lorenzo in exchange for a political position. Incidentally, I was on my way to that same island around the time Frank must have given away his father's parting gift, that island. That strange, tiny nation of San Lorenzo is where I remain now. It is where I bear witness to the most fascinating society on Earth, the nation that froze the entire world. There were two founders of the nation, and from the beginning, the two attempted to create a utopian society in which they had complete control over the feelings and actions of the people. One of them, who goes by only Bokanon, created a religion known as Bokanonism, he created a set of beliefs that he openly admits are all lies, yet his teachings are carefully followed by every single citizen, myself included. The other founder, Corporal McCabe, took the role of a tyrant that banned Bacanonism and made his practice punishable by death on the hook. The hook was also punishment for any crime at all. 
Despite the severe threat, McCabe hardly executed anybody. I now realized that they were creating a system of manipulation. The people despised the tyrant but feared the hook, which kept them from committing crime. Meanwhile, they were extremely occupied with their false religion and bookonanism, which left them with a feeling of fulfillment and purpose in their menial lives. I wonder if our religions are like that as well. I wonder if this life has any meaning at all. After all, Frank Honecker's Ice Nine destroyed the world in a matter of moments the day it slipped into the ocean. Just like that. And here I sit now, in this world devoid of life, and devoid of meaning for that matter. With these dismal thoughts, I am reminded of a conversation I once had with Newt Honecker. I like your painting. You see what it is? I suppose it means something different to everyone who sees it. It's a cat's cradle. Ah. The scratches are the string, right? No wonder kids grow up crazy. It's nothing but a bunch of X's. Just looking at a bunch of X's. And? No damn cat, no damn cradle.